My father was the greatest man who ever lived. Everyone says that about their father, but I'll almost bet you I say it the most. As an actor, I've performed on Broadway in Chorus Line and Dreamgirls and spent about two years out in LA. He was a well-renowned Broadway dancer through the 80s, and I doubt there was a place you could look without seeing his name. He was on Dreamgirls, a Chorus Line, and made weekly appearances on the Mary Tyler Moore Variety Hour. Don't you long for the feel of her when she's purring along in the breeze. Alongside that, he choreographed a whole number of shows. Dance was his whole life. That's even how he met my mom. Aside from dancing, he also taught dance, teaching at the University of Michigan, and often bringing me along as a baby. We lived in a rundown area of Ypsilanti, Michigan. There's the front of the house. It's a big one. We didn't have a lot of money, but I never noticed because my father still filled my life with toys and attention and enough love for any kid to be happy. Can you kiss? Ah! Your mama kiss. Your mama. Your mama. I remember it all gradually faded away. All the playing outside, all the attention from him, and it all started disappearing one day at a time. Oh, Daddy did something right. No one told me much. All everyone kept telling me was, Daddy is sick. I knew it was serious, but I, I didn't know how serious. He was diagnosed with cancer. 350,000 Americans will die from cancer. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the Cancer uh, in this, the simple uh, way to look at it. Cancer is a growth of cells. However, if cells are cancer cells, they grow, divide, and eventually form malignant tumors. Malignant tumors, unlike benign tumors, and he didn't have much time because it was very close to his brain, being in his jaw. Although he never smoked or chewed tobacco or anything that could lead to jaw cancer. Pretty soon a normal day would be lying in bed all day and once in a while eating weird ethnic foods which I found had undesirable tastes and aromas. Over time I could see how skinny he was becoming, almost skeletal. I remember one of the most memorable films in my life is The Secret of Nim, being the story of a mother trying to save her sick child. I would feel hope because it reminded me of my situation only with a role reversal. Is Timmy gonna die? No, sweetheart. He's just very sick. When will he get better? Soon. As you wish, as you wish. On days I didn't have school, I would lie in bed all day with him. All I could think was how long this was going to last. When will I have my father back? I felt as if he was gone already. On November 17th, 1992, my father died. I don't remember where I was at the time, but it was probably arranged that way. I remember meeting all these new people shortly afterward, but no one who wasn't crying. Every person I knew in my life at that point was crying. Everyone except me. I understood he was dead and he wasn't coming back. I just never cried. He was buried in Pennsylvania next to his mother, so I can't even go and visit him as often as I could, had he been buried here in Michigan. Try and let him sleep though, because he wants to. He's really tired. 
All my life, I have the constant reminder of my father's death. Being my name is Luke. The first time I met any person I know, the first thing out of their mouth is, Luke, I am your father. The first few years, I took it pretty hard, but over time, I learned to shake it off and eventually bottle it up inside me. Recently, at the University of Michigan, they developed the Tim Millette Scholarship in honor of my father, Tim Millette. The last thing my mother said to my father before he died was, you gave them a hell of a show, honey. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye.